In 1890, Austrian inventor Joseph Palweber had a wild idea. What if numbers could just flip? His mechanical jump hour display revolutionized timekeeping, but it wasn't until the swing in 60s and 70s that flip clocks became more mainstream, appearing on every nightstand and office desk. Fast forward to today. I scored this bad boy from the 80s for $10 at a thrift store. It's seen better days, and we're about to find out if this piece of retro tech can flip once again. It wasn't doing that before. Yes. I've wanted a flip clock for so long. Let's get into it. Wow. Throughout this repair, I found the flip clock fans forum. Anything from restoring to history lessons on flip clocks existed on this site. It's also tied to a YouTube channel. The flip clock in this video is the General Electric 74305F flip clock. This series started with production in the late 1970s and throughout the years has had different model types where in the name, the lack of or presence of a letter denoted different production variants indicating changes in the manufacturing location, cosmetic differences, or minor internal mechanism variations over the production run. This is the original model. Clearly it looks very similar to what we have in the video. The key difference though is that if you look closely at the numbers, the time mechanism used flipping tiles. And I just love these chrono tilt uh, GE mechanisms. They're just fascinating. They're like little Ferris wheels in there. In a way, it's a little more complicated than a flip clock. So that you'll see there's a flip, there's flipping going on, but it's back behind the scenes here. As you can see, on the actual hour wheel, there's way less panels than there are hours in a day. This is because both faces of the panels have numbers on them, so the clock needs to flip and orient to the correct number depending on the time. And so a flipping is still happening, but behind the scenes, not really similar to the flip clock flap kind of mechanism. This flip clock repair project truly tested my patience. I really thought that it would be a simple fix. I should have recognized by now, like with any other project, it's never as simple as it first seems. The inside of this thing is just a blast from the past. Look at this, probably hand coiled through whole components. The craziest part is this cable-driven system for selecting which radio station you're on. We've got the cable pretension with a spring, wraps around several pulleys around the top, and it moves this plastic bar watch. Through my research for this repair project, I learned that the Copal motor, the synchronous motor you see in this clock, is actually pretty common among flip clock assemblies. They all have a similar issue that over time, the motor kind of gunks up, the lubrication that was there dries out, so the motors don't really spin freely. Thankfully, it's not an electronics problem where the motor itself, like, exploded or something went wrong with it. It's really just about cleaning the motor, particularly the shaft and the bearings, and then applying oil or a lubrication of some sort to help it spin again. The culprit is this right here, the motor. And I've seen in some repair videos, people have been able to just put some electronics cleaner in the motor itself and it helps. And I naively thought it would be that simple. See how when I try and spin it, it's not really spinning freely. It's kind of locked up. I'm hoping the electronics cleaner will solve this issue. I made it to home hardware. Time to get the electronics cleaner. Good morning. Switch to an 
I was losing extreme hope with this electronics cleaner. Like I had to have sprayed this at least three or four times and the rotor wasn't unsticking at all until just now. Check this out. Just like in the repair video, it's spinning freely. This is great news. I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes to an hour. Hopefully all of the electronics cleaner will dry out. As well as some sewing machine oil for the little brass bearing on the motor shaft. Okay, here's the moment of truth. I'm going to plug the clock in. Okay, nothing is working, and that makes me wonder. It is AC, so, yep, 120 AC. So we are getting something to the motor, which is good. At this point, I was getting a little bit nervous because the only solution I had really found to my problem was just cleaning the motor with that cleaner. The cleaner did not work. I tried a second time, a third time. I even found a forum that said try dipping the motor windings in rubbing alcohol, letting it soak, letting it dry, it should help. And then after doing so and not seeing a change, I found another forum post in a flip clock forum that said using rubbing alcohol is not actually suggested because it wears away the glue that holds the magnets. That's not good. Okay, so it's still not working, but then I looked very closely to this rotor section, the spinning section of the motor, and I saw very slow movement. So I think the issue is just that the rotor is not properly clean. There's still something obstructing free movement. So I'm going to try and keep cleaning the motor. So after watching a bunch of videos, I learned that these are no longer manufactured Copal Japanese synchronous motors, which means that this motor uses the frequency of the AC voltage to spin. A lot of old flip clocks actually have this style of motor for the flip clock mechanism. So you have the synchronous motor, then there's a gearbox. This output gear from the gearbox meshes with the flip clock mechanism and then there's this plastic cover for it. Carefully I removed this cover. Unfortunately there was some cracking. It's old plastic. There are three rivets that hold the gearbox onto the motor thankfully in one piece and so I was able to just pry this off with a lot of patience using an exacto blade. You can see where I tried. There's some marks on the surface. I'm guessing this is aluminum. And you can see pretty clearly here why it's such a challenge to lubricate these motors. First of all, the output gear of this motor is very hard to access directly since the gearbox is in the way. But also, there's this like lip here. Also, do you see just how junky that is? I'm gonna give this a good clean with a toothbrush too. But the next move is to try and remove this gear so that the whole cap comes off and we can clean and lubricate the front of the shaft here as well as the back. Now at this point I got pretty nervous because where am I going to find a motor like that that doesn't cost me more than I paid for the clock? These Copal synchronous motors are no longer fabricated. There is only a select finite amount of these that exist on the market. If I seem to break it, this clock might not see the light of day again. Luckily, I stumbled across a YouTube video that showed how to take it apart. I found this GitHub link where somebody actually retrofitted the typical Arduino stepper motors to work on the flip clock mechanism, literally on the same clock that I have in this video. It also includes a 3D printed pinion as well as an Arduino nano circuit, which to be frank, I did not want to deal with and was hoping that I could just repair the motor. To my knowledge though, the synchronous motor would be the best approach for this mechanism given the fact that the motor runs off of the adjusted 60 hertz frequency so the time is pretty accurate. Often with these stepper motors though, a additional microcontroller is required for the timing. There it is! You can see it has some damage on the teeth. Thankfully those are near the bottom and they don't mesh with the plastic gear in the gearbox so I'm not too concerned. This should come apart 
Oh my. Okay, now we need to clean this and this. Whoa, there's a washer. We gotta be careful. As well as that side. Add some lubricant and see what happens. I think it will be also value added if I deconstruct the motor via a very artistic sketch, you know, so we can all be on the same page. This blue thing is the attachment bracket or plate. It's what holds the motor gearbox into the clock. When you remove this with two screws, the motor itself has a cover that's attached to the motor shaft. In order to remove the cover, the back gear or output gear on the motor shaft needs to be removed. There's also a washer here, and once those two have been pried off, the whole cover of the motor can come off. There is also a washer that sits between the motor windings and the motor cover. These are the motor windings. Back to the output gear of the motor, that becomes input to a gearbox. This gearbox steps down the movement and also has an output gear. This output gear of the gearbox is what meshes with the gears of the flip clock mechanism, more specifically the minutes portion. All of this is gunk that was all in the teeth of this little gear. Wow! When I took this all apart, I cleaned it with electronics cleaner I then applied sewing machine oil specifically to the metal parts of this motor. I applied sewing machine oil here at the base of the shaft attached to the cover. I also applied sewing machine oil here on the end of the shaft poking out of the motor from the back. At these regions, there are lips that hold the oil or lubricant there. I also made sure to brush lubricant on the shaft itself. I did use sewing machine oil because that's what I had on hand. It's generally safe for our metal gears, but I made sure to be extra careful that none was on this gear because the gearbox is made out of plastic gears and the last thing I want is for those to deteriorate, deteriorate over time due to the lubricant that I used. I'd also like to note that this gear, as well as the washers and the motor cover, were cleaned with rubbing alcohol before applying lubricant. And so that was the fix. Or so I thought. Okay, I'm gonna plug in the clock, and if this motor spins freely, then we fixed it. Oh my, it wasn't doing that before. We did it. Wow. Okay, let's put it back in the flip clock and see if this is actually gonna work. After reassembling the motor, resoldering the leads, and putting it back in place in the clock, I plugged it in, and lo and behold, the motor spun freely. I was so excited because I've never seen the clock do that, and I thought, this was it. It's fixed. It's gonna work. So I waited a minute to see the clock flip. Nothing flipped. I waited another minute, and still nothing flipped. So clearly there was a problem. But what? I cleaned it, it spins freely, and now what could possibly be going wrong? So I took a closer look at the moving parts of the motor. The rotor was spinning freely, that I knew and repaired. But looking at the gearbox, the output gear wasn't really spinning. It wasn't meshing well with the gear of the flip clock assembly. 
So I took it all apart to look at what was happening. Okay, so the motor is spinning. I see the gears in the gearbox working. I don't know if we have to wait a minute before we see the mechanism spin. Oh, so I don't see anything flipping. And now that the motor is spinning freely, I think there might be something wrong with the output of the gearbox because I never catch this output gear spinning to latch onto the flip clock mechanism. I'm not fully sure what I'm missing here though. I think I figured out what my problem is. The final gear in this gearbox that's supposed to spin this gear that meshes with the whole flip clock assembly has a shaft that was supposed to sit through this hole, but when I previously installed it, it wasn't the case, and so the gear wasn't aligned properly, I don't think. I'm hoping that this was the problem. <sighs> Brittle old plastic. Okay, another moment of truth. Basically, I'm now just waiting to see if the clock will spin. Oh my god, it worked! Okay, I hope that wasn't a fluke. It should flip here. Ah! Yes! I've wanted a flip clock for so long. 35. 